tension or innovation around unused mines. It's our big question this morning. What should happen to unused mines that have not been rehabilitated? And we've asked you to ponder about it, think about it, and maybe share your thoughts on a big issue. Don't even know if you've thought about it at all, but here's the question. What should happen to unused mines that have not been properly closed or rehabilitated? You can SMS your response to 33726. If you've got the answer, we'd love to read it and hear it. So Ayanda Ali Payne has been looking at a cooperative deal in that part of the country in the northwest. Let's cross to her now. Good morning, Ayanda. Well, a very good morning to you, Sam, once again. Yeah, in the absence of those mines, what happens to those who've been left unemployed? Well, the answer lies in this popular saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. 25 million rand has been set aside by the Dr. Kenneth Kaunda District Municipality to pump money into cooperatives such as this one. There's 64 of them to be exact. They're expected to create in the region of about 328 direct jobs, not to mention, of course, those jobs that are logistics, you know, on the periphery of those direct ones. But let's speak a little bit more to a private company now working very closely with the government in terms of implementing strategies such as the ones that we're seeing today. I'm joined by Lita Mbogodo, who is the executive chairman of the Tori Capital. That's the company that's involved here. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Ayanda. Lita, speak to us now a little bit about the importance of private-public partnerships when we see service delivery or job creation. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, this is one of the legacy projects of the executive mayor, Pinky Molloy, uh, for her 10 years of unbroken service. Uh, in terms of this project, what it entails is that uh, we would have a buyback center, 41 of them, uh, in the wards, and also you'd have a, a sorting and bailing plant that will be here in Clerkstop. So we're basically bringing, de we're decentralizing uh, waste and ensuring that no waste goes to the landfill site ultimately when this project is fully implemented. And also what the project entails is that it, it also re it extends the life of the landfill sites because by ensuring that you decentralize uh, you know sort of waste and waste gets collected at the at the buyback centers at households uh, it, 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 it the, then therefore there won't be any waste that goes into the landfill site and ultimately you'd have dealt with the issues of extending of the the, the landfill site and also the issue of uh, environmental issues that normally the waste creates so what you would have done is that you would have also reduced the environmental impact because therefore there won't be any waste that sits there in the landfill side for long. All the waste will be sorted and bailed and will be sold. And also you're dealing with the issues of diverting waste from the uh, municipal stream. Uh, so which therefore means that uh, in terms of environmental costs, the municipality is not going to have to spend a lot of money on environmental costs and also on, the, on, on logistics. Uh, because now the, the cooperatives themselves are the ones that are custodians of the projects. They are collecting this waste, they are sorting it, and then they then, then bail it and then get sold. Uh, and the project, we have been able to also get partners like Yonem Park, uh, who is now reprinted at Neo Park Recycling. They've been very, pro, you know, pro progressive. Uh, they are coming in. They are saying that we are not only going to buy the waste that uh, that that is bailed. We, are, we want to partner with these cooperatives and incubate the project and ensure that it becomes a success. So they are providing also training. That's what I wanted to speak about uh, up next. There's a, a training college that's also being set up, I believe, at uh, the Dr. Kenneth Kaunda Cooperatives College. Talk to us about that. Yes, there's a training for cooperatives because this project is not the only project that is going to be implemented within this district. There's a lot of projects. We've got uh, cereal, we've got juice, we've got ready mix, we've got uh, tire recycling. So this college is going to be supporting these, pro these projects that I've just mentioned with all the te technical skills and, and the know-how. And also this college will be training the communities so that you prepare them, even those that are on the li on the pipeline uh, in terms of these projects to be implemented. Then they get trained as well whilst they are waiting for their own projects to, to, to actually implement. And I can tell you now, this, this, is, this is by far, I mean, it hasn't been done in any other district. Dr. Kenneth Kawanda is the first district to do it. Uh, so it's one of those projects that really, even the, the funders, I mean, CIFA is currently the one that is extending the 25 million rand, but they've even gone to other provinces to introduce the project, even before us going to do that. Mm. So and of course, it's all about jobs, jobs, and more jobs. It's empowering, it's stimulating the local economy and creating employment? Yes, definitely. I mean, you're talking about 500 jobs here, like 320 direct and 200 uh, indirect jobs. And over and above that, 
even the reclaimers, those reclaimers that are normally working the landfill sites, those will be incorporated. There's currently 600 of them here in Clickstop. They will also work in this project. And over and above just the jobs, we want to also destigmatize de 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 the, the, the waste industry so that people, when they look at waste, they look at money. And, and also to, to, to look at the well-being of these uh, reclaimers because currently they are, they, psychologically they are not prepared. So we've engaged some of the mines to come on board as well, ensure that at least these, these reclaimers are rehabilitated and those that want to be grouped in co into cooperatives, they are grouped and they can actually start now looking at the, what they do as a business. So we're, we're looking at really issues of empowering them in a sustainable way and also prepare them so that really they can participate meaningfully into the mainstream economy. So far, is the community buy-in? Yes, there's a community buy-in. Uh, I mean, you would imagine there's a, this, this project involves 64 cooperatives and throughout the whole district. So, so all the districts, all the local municipalities are involved, the, the communities are involved, and they will also benefit because as opposed to now just dispose your waste in, in, your, in your dustbin, you can actually sell that waste. So, so there will be, uh, you know, there will be waste uh, awareness campaigns that will be run as part of this program so that people can start looking at waste differently. And ultimately, they will also be empowered. Indeed. And we'll have to leave it there, at least for now. I like that it's a double-edged sword. It's not only greening the environment, but also creating employment. And of course, that community uh, buy-in is absolutely crucial. It brings to mind a saying that says, uh, if you do anything for me, without me, you do it against me. So getting the community to buy into the vision is absolutely critical. Thank you so much uh, for that input from Tsori Capital. is Lita Mbokoto. He's the executive chairman of that entity. More after this short break. Do stay with us.